Hello and welcome to this week's Artist Talk in our series here at Yukon Artists at Work in Whitehorse, Yukon. It's August 27th, 2020. I'm Leslie Leong and I would like to acknowledge we are here on the traditional territory of the Tagish Kwan people where the Tan Kwachan Council and the Kwanlun Dun First Nation govern. I thank them for sharing this land with us. I'd also like to thank the Yukon Arts Fund for supporting the Artists in the Window series and Music Yukon for making it possible to host an additional four artists. Today, we're here with Jackie Dow Irva, this week's Artist in the Window. Jackie is a painter in both acrylics and watercolor. Say hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so Jackie, give us a sense of your, your visual sense of the visual sense of your work briefly like well uh, as far as media i am a mixed media water media artist mainly uh i work in acrylics watercolors um some pastels and oh. you know pen and ink but mainly i've been known in years recent years for my acrylics yes but uh we can visit this later i got back into watercolors again a few uh -huh. months ago uh, and I would say mainly my subject matter is uh, the Yukon landscape. Uh, I, I love the, the wilderness and I love nature yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Well actually so that would bring me into this question is um, about living remotely. So you live near Faro yes? Yes I am about 30 kilometers out of Faro. And how does that influence your work? Well, it has been a bit of a process. Uh, we've lived there. We've had the land for uh, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we developed, we built it from nothing. My husband was the builder. Oh. And uh, our family moved there in 2006. We lived in a wall tent for a couple of years. <laughs> I had an outside screen tent studio <laughs> at that point and painted many mushrooms because we had some really great mushroom summers and that's coming on right now. Uh, it's really nice to see it uh, in, when you go out for our walks uh, and a lovely thing to paint. Um, uh, and I think it really has, it has really influenced me because when I guess your psyche is immersed in a, mm. an environment. It really does affect you. Mm. Uh, for me, it does. I, I just find that I paint a lot of what I'm seeing and it gets in the subconscious really. Uh, the reason I say that is, is that I've lived in a lot of different areas in Canada. Okay. So when I lived in Nova Scotia, like I was around the ocean a lot. I was in Halifax and and you know, I'd be at the waterfront, and I'd see I'd, I'd see a lot of maritime scenes, and I and I painted the maritimes. I painted the water and the ocean, and I lived on the prairies for a while, and I became immersed in that landscape, and it got into my subconscious, and I was painting big skies and sunsets, and it was amazing, like to do that. But I would I really have to say when uh, when I came to the Yukon, it was really like a spiritual experience for me. Mm -hmm. When I first got here, we were living on the South Klondike and it was amazing to drive down to Carcross. We lived at Lewis Lake okay. and another painter, Daphne Manel, was my neighbor with Lee oh, and I got to meet them <laughs> and some few other people, but um, it was just, it was just so beautiful, like, and so breathtaking. And the, when we came, it was in the autumn yeah. and I remember the mists and you'd get up in the morning and the lakes would be covered in the mists and the, and I just, I have a really vivid imagination. So what happens is when I see something, it's like, it's not a photographic memory. I don't, but I just remember certain colors and like moods, mm. moods of the landscape mm. and light. Now it hasn't, if I were to be really honest, I think it's been in the last few years that I've kind of matured a little bit more and I really work on the light a lot more in my paintings. Okay. Mm -hmm. I used to just paint more like middle of the day, like where it was, I didn't have to work with the light, but now I, I strive to capture that. <laughs> mm, neat, neat. Yeah. So, and what's your preference then, plein air or in your studio? You know, I'm not really a, 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 a plein air painter, even though I live right on the river, I yeah. walk and I'm outside a lot. And I have, of course, done sketches. I've, I've actually done plein air of, 
of the Magandi River, which is my home. Okay. But I prefer to do, like I do photo reference. I'll take lots of photographs. I prefer to be in my studio. And I like to put a lot of different elements of one scene together mm. into my painting. So for example, I might find a really nice reference of the river and I might think, like I might do it with the Northern Lights, for example. And that's something that I think I'm in a really fun era for me, for my painting, because when you work your whole life for something and you get to a point where you feel like you, it's just, it's not so much the frustration that you had in your younger years, mm -hmm. like you know what you want, but, and you can see it in your mind, but you can't translate it into actual physical reality. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when you can actually start to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm not saying I do it all the time. I don't want to make it sound like I've arrived on some, there's many, much, much room for growth, but well, it's like <laughs> just a lot of fun. It's just yeah. a lot of fun to be able to put different elements, like look at a, at a summer scene of, of the Yukon River, for example, mm -hmm. with the aspens and, and, and I've got a photo and it's like, okay, it's all green, take it home and make it into a fall scene, wow. right? Like just change yeah. it, like, okay. and say, okay, well, because I just, I, when I'm working and this is process again, I call it no mind. Mm -hmm. It's like the biggest thing for me as an artist was to learn to create the environment and the circumstances in my life to show up at the easel yeah. and be able to be that channel for the mm -hmm. work to be able to come through me and for me to be able to do it. Wow. And that, yeah. that's a, that's a, that's many things. It's, it's spiritual, it's mental, it's physical. I have to not be exhausted and mm. I've quit all my other jobs. I'm a full-time artist now. And I really treasure that and, I, and, I, and I, I guard it because artists, we can get so busy and we're out there yeah, and it's yes. this great outgoing movement. But for me, I had to learn how to fill my well mm. and to replenish myself in order to be able to show up at the easel mm. and to have the joy like the joy to create the work that I really want to create. Right. Wow. Okay. Sounds exciting. <laughs> I hope <laughs> so. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so just a little bit about technique. Do you have any extra special tools that you use or techniques or, um, or paint or what's your favorite thing? Okay. Well, creating? you know, um, I, I, I use, of course, my brushes and everything. I, I, I really like glazing medium. Oh. I've got it in, like, into putting a lot of glazes on my work. And so um, I use a heavy body acrylic glaze. It's, it's not the thin one. Mm. Uh, and, and I also sometimes like to create texture in my paintings. Okay. Um, I've, um, I always, always have a very fine brush, like a rigor brush, I'll, uh, so I can create detail. Mm. Uh, because I am, uh, I am a realist painter, but I, I like to have some, uh, so I'm doing a lot of detail work as, yeah. as far as that brush goes. So you need to have a good brush like that. But I also think it's important that I have a really big brush because you don't want to have all little strokes. Yeah. And I like to use that for my skies and, you know, mm. like the big, you know, blocks of color you need it especially mm -hmm. and which brings me to another point like I have been working on larger works now mm. 24 by 36 is large but I like I I did a show a few years ago it was called Forest Lover and and I did a, a really huge aspen painting and it was oh. like four feet by six feet and Wow. I really like to do even bigger paintings. Wow, so, it's almost life size. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna have to get bigger brushes because mm, <laughs> you'd okay. be there all day if yeah. you were, you know, yeah. you don't need little tiny brushes for that. So, <laughs> but, but it's it's really exciting to have new prospects and mm. and to challenge yourself and to to grow as an artist, right? So, yeah, I mean, there's lots of of, of ideas I have for the future, but I try to stay in the now. Like yeah. this is this is the most important time is now. Yeah. So you've gone really big, um, but then there's also very small. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing in the window this week and about, explain this TNT. Okay. <laughs> TNT is like dynamite comes in small packages. No, that's just a joke, but <laughs> the, 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 the teeny tiny watercolors, it was just, I really like marketing in some ways. And I thought that was a good name. 
yeah. and they they are they're quite small yes um, you can see them in the background yeah. there they're very beautiful uh they're on a card format yeah. um it's kind of coming full circle for me because when i was uh in my early 20s i lived in halifax mm -hmm. and i would go to the public gardens oh. i had a vending license and i would set up and i was Ever since I was five years old, it was my dream to be an artist. This has always been my dream. Wow. And, and, and I am living it now. And yeah. I think sometimes it really, I just am filled with gratitude to be able mm -hmm. to do this for, for my life and mm -hmm. for my, it is my living as well. And, and I really enjoy it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm, I'm 25. I met the, at the, you know, at the public gardens and I started with painting these little tiny watercolors and mm. people would come from all over the world. It's quite a, a tourist destination, Halifax. And they would buy these little cards from me and um, I was working in watercolor. So I, I, and then when my children were, were young, I didn't have a lot of time to paint, but mm. I found that that format really worked well because I could, could I could, have a sense of completion and accomplishment and I would do little tiny watercolors yeah. and then I would sell them in Faro at the interpretive center mm -hmm. and uh, you know it was just on a small scale mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of people remember me from when I first came to the Yukon 22 years ago I would st be still be doing those little watercolors <laughs> but in 2004 I really I wanted to learn more so I mm -hmm. took on the medium of acrylic and started painting on canvas and Believe me, uh, it was really frustrating <laughs> oh, wow. when so I first started. Eh? Yeah, different? and I'm pretty well self-taught. Yeah. Like uh, I did have some watercolor classes when I was quite mm -hmm. young. Uh, like I actually won a scholarship for a, a watercolor workshop in in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, mm -hmm. right out of high school, yeah. and it was really exciting for me. And uh, it was with a Chinese watercolorist. Mm -hmm. His name was Chin Kok Tan, mm -hmm. and he worked at the University of Toronto and. He was uh, very disciplined and he taught me a lot of things, but it wasn't as enjoyable as I thought it was going to be, but, no. but it was still, it was good. I, I remembered a lot of things. He taught me a lot about value at that time and it was really good, uh, good experience for me. Um, I lost my train of thought, but yeah. anyway, we were talking about, about TNT and yeah. what you're doing in the window this week. So mm -hmm. when COVID hit and mm -hmm. the pandemic came, it really cleared my slate. Everything was swept away. Okay. Everything was canceled and I was home. Mm. And I cannot tell you what a great gift that was. Mm. I wasn't very happy about it at first in my mind, <laughs> yeah. but then once I actually digested what was happening and I realized, hey, this is out of my control. And so I just let go. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm just gonna sit each morning and have my coffee at the table here and paint these little tiny watercolors. Aww. And I posted them and, and I gave some of them away. I, they're nice little gifts. And then that was kind of my uh, intention was to paint them uh, for people to give to their loved ones mm. because we can't see everybody in our circles right now. Like, especially if we live you know, have family out of province. And yeah. I thought it would be a nice, affordable, I have them priced really well. We don't have to discuss that now, but you know, people can send them to, mm. to people that they really care about. It's a special gift. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. And so I'm doing them uh, every day. Yeah. And if you come into the gallery, all you have to do is step in and I, I want to bring you in here because we have such a wonderful group of artists and and to see everybody's work is just amazing. And when you come in, you get to put your name in for a free draw to win an original TNT. Cute. And I do mm. one, there's a new one every day. And yeah, so that's what I'm doing here. Neat. And here we have a little watercolor, for example, that's of Northern Lights. And the reason why I wanted to show this one was because you have been working with a company called Bulla, doing your putting your artwork on apparel. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, you know, sometimes when you work for a living for an artist, you're thinking, okay, well, what can what what can I do to to find an avenue for income? Well, this was something that I, I received an email from Bulla. And it said we'd like to put your artwork on our our our, our outdoor clothing wear 
it's a neck, it's called a neck tube and just out of the blue. Yes. And I thought, oh, this is a scam. So <laughs> I, I just put it off. I think I put it in a folder. And then my son, who is, he's techie, he, he goes to university for computer science. I said, Sam, can you look that up for me? And he says, mom, that's not a scam. He says, you got to contact them. That's a company. I said, Bula? <laughs> and he said, yes. So uh, I contacted them and I had a phone interview and basically what the company wanted to do was they picked two artists in Canada awesome. and they found me online and they said, we want to put your artwork on our neck tubes and it's called licensing. We pay you a fee and we give you a royalty for each one that's sold and you can sell them yourself as well. Nice. So that happened a couple years ago and uh, the image of the Northern Lights that you showed was picked for the Arctic Winter Game teams mm -hmm. officially and but unfortunately you know we all know the rest of the story but sad. So what I will tell us? Well, they, we, it, the games were canceled because of COVID. Yeah, and that must have been very disappointing. But they did sell all the buffs before the games began. And, the, and I, yeah, so I, I believe that, I mean, the teams probably got theirs. Oh, okay. But they also sold, they were sold at Coast Mountain and they're, they're carried in different stores in okay. town. But they're all across Canada uh, and US and they sell worldwide on the web. And then I got another email uh, in September last year, because it's always a year ahead, everything yeah. when it comes to this type of uh, product. And they wanted to license me again because they said it did so well. And wow. so there's a new product line coming out in uh, November. It's actually coming out in November this year. Mm -hmm. And there will be beanies as well. Oh, so nice. that was another licensing agreement. And it's like, wow, like, I mean, I feel very fortunate and, great. and lucky yeah. to have had that happen. And it's, it's, a, it's a really great way uh, for artists to use, you know, images that they've, they've painted them or they've used them or sold them. And now, you know, it, it gets used on other things. Yeah. So nice. it's a good, nice. great. Thing. How does it feel when you see somebody wearing one? Well, you know, it, Especially it's really, someone you don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, um, and the other thing I just wanted to say is that, um, like the company, I, I phoned them in the spring because I had a huge order coming in for tourism this summer and, mm. and you know, they, they have to be printed. So they have to be pre-ordered. Mm. And I was a little bit nervous because, um, you know, there's a lot of stores ordered them in large quantities and it was like, oh, wow, is this going to work out? Um, and they, all the stores said, yes, they take them. And the, the owner of uh, the company, he said, you know, the one thing that's selling really well for us is the buffs. That's what they're, or the, huh. the neck tubes, because yeah. people can use them. Yeah. Oh yes. To cover. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you can, yeah. you can walk into the store and I mean, it's not a medical grade, yeah. but it works really well for, for a face covering, like, uh, you know, in a pinch and yeah. And yeah, and you can actually, some people have put YouTubes out where you can put things inside them to yeah. use them like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's hard to top. So what's next? Well, you know, um, I really want to do some painting of the Casca traditional territory. Oh. And maybe- Where you live? Yeah. Yes. Like I live uh, in the, on the Robert Campbell Highway. And I, I love my home and I love the land around me. And I've, you know, I've done a lot of work in Ross River over the years with painting classes um, and worked at the college for a while. Um, and I don't know, I, I, I am looking at putting in a proposal to work with them. Mm -hmm. I haven't really developed anything yet, but uh, coming up this fall, I, I have some plans. Uh, this painting, that's beside me is um uh it's called the gold creek or boulder creek is another name that's used it's on the north canola highway and it was actually a, it's uh there's a, a photo reference story to this um sometimes i ask permission from different people that take photos this happened to be a photographer uh he's well known his name is christian boucher mm -hmm. and he gave me permission to paint his image of mm -hmm. this particular spot. We had a show in 2016 uh, and it was called Double Vision. 
and uh, he I remember that show it was great it really was and I really was so grateful to Christian to allow me to do that because I, I couldn't travel up to the, up there then and he mm. he took some pretty spectacular reference photos that I was had total permission to use and the show was was wonderful but um, I'd like to work with the people mm. with the with the Denna council and see uh, you know so I have some some hopes and some plans for that yeah. Uh, like I said, nothing has come come officially yet, or but we'll see. Yeah. And yeah, I'm I'm hoping to do some really large paintings again. Okay. Because uh, I have a feeling I might be home a little bit more this winter. Um, I love coming into the gallery here. Uh, I usually come for a week at a time, but I don't like to come during transition time when the weather. Mm. We've had long transitions in the oh. fall, so. It's just to do with travel and road safety. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, it's hard to yeah. travel a long way in the, in the, in the, just in the October, November right. months. Yeah. And um, do you have any plans for a show? Uh, no, not yet. Yeah. But yeah. you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of fun too. You had a good summer. You did plain air, didn't you? Oh yes. I and was you also did Created in the Canyon. Yes. That was put on by the Yukon Conservation Society. Yes. That did was you enjoy lovely. that even though you prefer the studio? You know, I did. I really did. And you know what I really liked was uh, I loved talking with the people and mm -hmm. connecting. Um, just one thing, you know, about me and my art is I believe that art is about connection. Mm -hmm. uh, it's connection to self and connection to your source. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to call it God or spirit or universe, but it, to source. Whatever that is. Yeah. yeah, it's, it, yeah. And, and it's connection. And then it's connection to people. Our, mm -hmm. our, my art, our art yeah. connects us to people. Mm -hmm. And that is the, a really beautiful thing because mm -hmm. why would we create all this beautiful art if it was just for ourselves? Yeah. It really is for other people as well. So mm -hmm. I um I really enjoyed being in the canyon and talking with everybody and and it was so nice after you know you know having so, a lot of solitude in the in the months before yeah yeah nice. so nice. okay do you have anything else you'd like to tell us about um just my artist statement mm -hmm. um I say make each day your work of art <laughs> and that <Yes>. means. <laughs> I think everybody can do that actually. I think we're all artists in our own way, but I liked it because I am an artist. So yeah. that was make each day your work of art, be true to yourself. Yeah. Like do what, you know, what, what really animates you, mm. what makes you happy, what inspires you and, uh, you know, help others. Uh, it's really nice if you can do that with your art and, and give thanks. Yes. So, that's about it. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Leslie. I really appreciate great. it. Great. <laughs> appreciate it. Well, you can see Jackie's art um, here at Yukon Artists at Work. And she has a Facebook page, uh, Jackie at Jackie Dow Irvine. And Instagram the same. And Instagram the same. Good. good and I also know. have an Etsy channel. Oh, you have an Etsy channel. Okay, yeah. that wasn't listed. Okay, yeah. good. So there you go. Under your same name? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then you have a blog, Yes. right? JackieIrvine.blogspot.com? Yes. Correct. Okay, good. Thank you, Leslie. And um, yeah, you can see her working in the window tomorrow, which is Friday, the 28th of yeah. August. And you're going to do some on Saturday, the 29th as well. Yes. Excellent. That's really nice. And of course, you can always see her work here in the gallery at Yukon Artists at Work in Whitehorse. And um, next week, we have a glass artist, Janine Baker. She'll be in the window. <laughs> and we'll be doing an interview with her on Thursday, too. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll have somebody participate and yeah, come to that one. Well, thank you very much, Jackie. And uh, yes, we look forward to watching you in the window. <laughs> and thank you for interviewing me. <laughs> You're welcome. It's great. Thank you. <laughs>